Barton Village is one of my favorite parts of the city. Some people say it's because I own a business in the area. That's right, Mosaic Beer Bar, 431 Barton Street East. Come on down, tell them Grande sent you. But the real reason is because of its history. There is so much history in these few short blocks. From the old Bank of Hamilton, to the Spanish Pentecostal Church, to the Playhouse Theater, to this old pharmacy that's now a craft beer bar. The best craft beer bar in the city. Mosaic Beer Bar, 431 Barton Street East. But then there's the block between Wentworth and Sanford. On one side is the Bombardieri Building. On the other, the Church of Hope for All Nations. And in between, these short squat houses that were clearly built sometime in the 70s. What happened here? This is the story of the Hamilton Forum. The Barton Forum was located right here, between Barton and Bristol, Wentworth and Sanford. Most of the houses in this area were built between 1900 and 1930, but these houses have a much more 1970s aesthetic. That's because they were all built after the Forum was torn down in 1977. The Forum was first built by Andrew Ross. Yeah, that Andrew Ross. It was envisioned as a roller skating rink, but also hosted boxing and wrestling and a few concerts, including Rush, Nazareth, Louis Armstrong, and Duke Ellington. Yeah, that Duke Ellington. But what it's mostly known for is hockey. If you know anything about hockey, you've heard of the original six, the first six teams in the NHL from 1942 until 1967. If you know anything else about hockey, you know that the NHL started in 1917, a full quarter century before the original six era. One of the many teams from these early years played right here in Hamilton on Barton Street. Yeah, that's a good take. The Hamilton Tigers played here from 1920 until 1925. The club was founded in 1878 as the Quebec Bulldogs, but the franchise was moved here when they were purchased by the Abso Pure Ice Company. The first few seasons were pretty bad, but they finished top of the standings in the 1924-25 season. The Tigers were set to go to the playoffs, but they wanted to be compensated for the extra games they would be playing. Team management refused, the players went on strike, and the league awarded Montreal Hamilton's spot in the Stanley Cup Finals. <laughs> The Tigers player contracts were all sold to the New York Americans, and the team was dissolved. The New York Americans continued playing in the NHL until 1942, and when they disbanded, the original six era started. The NHL's Tigers weren't the only team to call Barton Street home. There was also the Red Wings, the Finn Cups, the Tiger Cubs, the Wizards, the Tigers, and the Tigers. Yeah, we've got a thing about Tigers in this city. I don't get it either. There's even a tiger on our municipal crest. Why is there a tiger on our municipal crest? There were lots of other events as well. The Forum was host to the boxing and wrestling events in the inaugural British Empire Games. And although information is hard to come by, it was apparently home to several roller derby teams. By the 1970s, the arena was really starting to show its age. In 76, the ice making equipment broke and nobody wanted to pay to fix it. So they decided to tear it down instead. Ron Cupido, one of the owners, expected heritage advocates to oppose the demolition, but no opposition ever came. If you come down to Barton Street, there's no monument, there's no marker, there's only this faded mural a couple blocks away. It probably won't be around much longer either. Do you think these people know that they're driving past a former NHL venue? I don't expect buildings like this to last forever. I just think it'd be nice if we acknowledged this piece of faded Hamilton. Hey guys, welcome to the outro. Uh, this was originally going to be part of a much longer video about the all the venues of the 1930 British Empire Games, but I got it completely filmed and about 80% edited, and I realized that I completely hated it. I wasn't happy where it was going. So I kind of scrapped it and I pulled out the bits about the Barton Forum because that was the part that was most interesting to me personally. 
Um, but I did all this research about the British Empire games and Hamilton, so uh, I'm just gonna throw some random facts and tidbits at you so I feel like I've gotten something out of my effort. Uh, off the top, Valerie Davies, she was the flag bearer for Wales. This is the first time a woman was a flag bearer in any sort of international competition like this. Prior to these games, athletes would get their medals by walking up to some sort of member of the royal family or visiting dignitary, and the dignitary would be up on a stage and they would hand the medal down. Hamilton was the first place that used a podium where the first place person stood elevated and then the second and third on either side. Thank you to Robert Barney at Western University for confirming that for me. The 1930 and the 1934 British Empire Games were the only two times that Newfoundland competed uh, as their own separate dominion. You, dear watcher, are now one of the very, very few people that know where the boxing and wrestling events took place in the 1930s. Uh, I, I had reached out to the Hamilton Library and they were able to tell me that they knew it happened at the Hamilton Arena but they didn't have any information on what the Hamilton Arena was or where it was located. Uh, I dug through a bunch of the old city directories and I was able to find out that that was the old name for the Hamilton Forum. Well, that's all for now. Uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for your patience. The next video will probably be about trains again. <coughs> Goodbye.